Thank you so much for taking the time to view this presentation at the 2020 Education Symposium. We hope you will find it engaging, thought-provoking, and above all else, enjoyable. My name is Jonathan Sawicki, and I am a fellow in pediatric hospital medicine, and I'm joined today by my remarkable program director, Dr. Rebecca Pertel. We have the pleasure of discussing one of the long lost principles in health sciences, curiosity. Dr. Patel, I will leave it to you to start us on this journey with a story. Thank you. So our story is gonna be about Sam. This is Sam. He's almost one and he's awfully cute and he's curious. At home, you can find him eagerly crawling around the room to discover something new. He finds everything interesting. What happens when I throw these shoes at the door? What happens when I place these shoes on my head? What happens when I eat these shoes? He's curious how toys work. Playing with stacking cups, he separates them all and scatters them about with delight around the room. By six, Sam would get lost in the woods longer than his parents would like. He would take the time to, to do the tedious task of bringing home fish eggs astonished by his discovery. He was excited to figure out how to set up their new home in his garage and interested to see what would happen next. By eight years old, Sam had made up his own math because it just didn't make sense that one was called one and one plus one was always two. It seemed arbitrary. His parents suggested he submit his idea to the school math fair, which he subsequently won. But it was the idea and the inclusive process that brought him the real satisfaction. That same year, math turned out to be both friends and foes. He had to learn long division like all the other third graders. But for him, it would be involved in full out temper tantrum. He could easily get the answer by memorizing the steps, but the why behind the steps was missing, and it truly seemed crazy. Middle school came, and it was an academic breeze. He spent most of his time in the hallways anyways, due to his curious antics. Then came high school, which was filled with a lot of work, some challenging, but the majority based on regurgitation. Teachers no longer had patience for his behavior. They often recommended easier classes to lessen their own frustration managing Sam. Thankfully, college was amazing. Once some of Sam's confidence came back, Curiosity compelled Sam to take interesting classes they never even knew existed, like anthropology of man and woman, social problems, and Hinduism. He joyfully engaged in intellectual debate. Curiosity brought Sam to different cultures to learn about others and himself. And like others, it ultimately brought him to medicine. Med school was indeed the famous fire hydrant of knowledge. It was stressful. After a test one day, he even found himself bickering with faculty about the exact wording of the question so he could get just one more point. By clerkship, Sam was asked to further explore topics and questions that came up during rounds so Sam could lead discussions the following day with the team. It drove him crazy. He just found it inefficient and cumbersome. It just distracted him from the amount of time he had to truly learn efficiently with questions. He was frustrated. Thank you, Dr. Patel, for taking us on that journey of curiosity. We do have a couple of learning objectives that we would like to achieve by the end of this talk. We want you to be able to list at least four benefits of promoting curiosity in the health sciences. We also want you to be able to identify three barriers to promoting curiosity. And finally, we want you to be able to formulate a plan to foster curiosity within your own discipline. Why are we even talking about this? Why is it even worthwhile to promote a trait as fundamental as curiosity? Well, because the benefits of encouraging this trait, especially within the health sciences, are extremely far reaching. First of all, patient care is going to be improved. Curious clinicians are going to provide more evidence-based and patient-centered care. They're never gonna be satisfied with the answer because that's how it's always been done. That's just how we do things here. They're gonna pursue the most relevant and up-to-date information to inform their decision-making. They're gonna to get to know each patient 
not so that they can check a box in the social history of the electronic medical record, but because they are interested in the story that the patient has to tell. Curiosity can also drive introspection and reflection, powerful tools to combat one of healthcare's greatest foes, burnout. Curiosity can also help mitigate clinicians' cognitive biases, thereby improving clinical reasoning skills, decreasing diagnostic error, and ultimately improving patient safety. Perhaps the greatest endorsement of these benefits comes from the Association of American Medical Colleges, which lists curiosity as a fundamental principle in the practice of medicine. Despite these benefits, despite an endorsement from one of the leading medical education organizations within the country, curiosity is often lost in today's healthcare providers and trainees. What is it about our current healthcare system and educational system that deprive individuals of this all important principle? It turns out there are significant barriers to overcome, many of which may seem insurmountable. For starters, within our healthcare system, there's a never ending quest for efficiency. When a system's revenue is driven by the sheer number of consumers, i.e. patients, there will always be a financial incentive to be efficient, to see a larger number of patients in a shorter amount of time. On top of this, no individual wants to be in the hospital or clinic forever. Thus, healthcare providers will always have an internal drive to finish their work and get home to life outside of medicine. Healthcare professionals and especially trainees also face significant time constraints and overburdened work schedules. How can you expect a resident with a daily schedule filled with pre-rounds, morning report, multidisciplinary rounds, bedside rounds, ordering tests and medications, noon conference, note writing, consult calling, and of course, the inevitable afternoon admission to invest extra time to be curious in each patient encounter. There just simply are not enough hours in the day. As educators in the health sciences, we do love to gripe about the healthcare system. However, this, in this particular instance, the medical education system is not off the hook. Medical knowledge tends to be passed down from expert to novice. Because of this hierarchy, learners tend to put up a self-imposed psychological barrier which prevents them from questioning the expert. There is a fear of judgment, of asking a stupid question, of any negative interaction that could be damaging to the learner's evaluation. Think about the last lecture you heard from a content expert in a standing room only auditorium. Think about the fascination that expert generated in your head and the questions you wanted to send his or her way. I imagine that some of you, perhaps even the majority of you, met that initial inquisitiveness with hesitation. We wanted to shatter these barriers. We wanted to instill a new sense of curiosity within pediatric residents and unlock all of the benefits of this neglected principle. Thanks to a little extra time in residence schedules afforded by a certain pandemic, we were able to do just that. Dr. Patel? Thank you. And with that, we created the case cascade. To foster curiosity and critical thinking via slow case-based learning. This could be thought of a morning report on steroids, but with a focus on the processes needed to solve some dilemmas as opposed to the actual diagnosis. One patient case was present, presented over one week with two to three one-hour sessions. Time was finally on our side. Rabbit holes that emerged out of group discussions and learner discussions were explored. At times, these were intentionally planted. Participants included pediatric residents and pediatric hospitalists attending. All sessions were virtual over Zoom, and a total of five patient cases were presented over a six-week period. Each case had its own objectives based on inherent key points of the case, such as basic science and pathophysiology, but also included clinical reasoning and evidence-based medicine. Learning activities were accomplished to promote the process. Specific learning activities included creating differential diagnoses, deciding the next steps in management, 
generating learning questions, conducting lit searches to answer those questions, and creating detailed illness scripts. The phrase, I don't know, but I'm going to find out, was encouraged. Being the medical educators that we are, we of course had to evaluate the success or failure of our newly instituted curriculum. At the end of each case, we sent residents an electronic evaluation form ascertaining their general reactions and self-perceived achievement in each of the learning objectives. The responses were overwhelmingly positive. All residents felt the sessions met their educational needs and provided them with new information. Self-perceived achievement in each learning objective increased after each session. Participants' favorite parts included searching the literature and the intellectually engaging nature of the sessions. This provided indirect evidence that we did indeed help to evoke a sense of inquisitiveness within the participants. Thank you all again for spending time with us. We hope that in learning about our Case Cascade curriculum, your curiosity has been piqued and you will plan to explicitly foster this all important trait in the learners within your own discipline. Thank you.